Hello, I'm Wamla, and you're watching Home Build TV English News Bulletin. First news and headlines. The Indian Medical Association IMA on Saturday said that 719 doctors have lost their lives due to coronavirus in the second wave of the COVID pandemic, with Bihar recording the maximum fatalities. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on Saturday rubbished the claims of so-called miscreants of hacking the COVID system and data leak. Mega Raja Gopalan, an Indian origin journalist, along with two contributors, has won the Pulitzer Prize for innovative investigative reports that expose the vast infrastructure of prisons and mass internment camps secretly built by China for detaining hundreds of thousands of Muslims in its restive Xinjiang region. News in details, Nagaland based entrepreneur and investor Yanren Kikon has released a book, Finding Hope, Principles of a Successful Race, a book that narrates the stories and deeply personal experiences of some of the most well-known personalities from the Naga community who found success after facing abject adversity. Also the man behind some of the biggest musical artistry events in the recent times in the state officially released the book on March 5, 2021 online. It is now available for Naglin readers too. Reverend Dr. P. Dozo dedicated the book with a prayer. The book tells the story of several eminent Naga personalities who experienced hardship and struggled in their lives before finding success to become inspiration for others. They include former drug addict to Governor's Award winning illustrator Sande Monguli, to fashion designer Bambi Kevichusa, from rock musician Mao Subong, to the Konyak Naga's first military officer Tongkong Konyak, from missionary Reverend Dr. Puvei Dozo, to Naga musical legend Metanile Jutakre. The book is available on Amazon, Flipkart, and Golpapa. The book is published by 24 by 7 Publishing House, based in Kolkata. Besides being an entrepreneur, Yanren Kikon is a certified financial analyst and a classically trained musician. He is also the director of financial management services Stratton Financial Services, besides being CEO of Sky Entertainment, a group which has brought in internationally acclaimed musicians to India, not to mention a successful Guinness World Record for Naglen. Delhi police has reportedly apprehended two CS, a Tibetan woman, and eight others in connection with a rupees 150 crore financial scam run by China-based entities and defrauded over five lakh Indians, Times of India reported. Quick earning apps like Easy Plan and Power Bank were used to lure customers to invest using these malicious apps. Over 150 crore were siphoned off in two months through a network of 110 shell companies, Police Commissioner S. N. Srivastava told the publication. Reportedly, these applications offered lucrative returns on the investment amount, promising to double the money in 24 to 35 days. The apps offered investment options starting from rupees 300 to lakhs of rupees and promised returns on an hourly and daily basis. Powerbank app was recently trending at number 4 on Google, the report added. DCB Anyesh Roy said that the cybercrime cell had noticed various posts on social media about the above-mentioned two apps. The police then carried out an extensive analysis of these apps and found that EasyPlan was available on the website www.easyplan.in, while the Powerbank app projected itself as a Bengaluru-based startup. However, the servers on which these apps were hosted were found to be in China. The apps also stole sensitive data from people's devices by receiving several permissions including access to camera, read contact details and read and write to external storage. A large number of such apps have been circulated by the fraudsters including Powerbank, EasyCoin, Sun Factory, Lightning Powerbank, etc. Some of these fraudulent malicious apps were also listed on Google Play Store, said a senior officer. The apps were promoted through YouTube channels, Telegram and WhatsApp bulk messages. 
A PIL has been filed in the Supreme Court seeking directions to the central and state governments for appropriate steps to seize 100% Benami properties and disproportionate assets and invoke the National Security Act against the criminals directly or indirectly involved in human trafficking and smuggling. The PIL also sought direction to the center to examine international laws relating to trafficking and smuggling and take appropriate steps to insert a special chapter on these offenses in the Indian Penal Code. The petition filed by advocate Ashwini Kumar Upatia further asked to direct the Law Commission of India to prepare a report on human trafficking and smuggling within three months. It added that human trafficking is a serious crime and a grave violation of human rights and sexual exploitation of children is worse than any other offense. However, it stated, due to the weak, outdated, ineffective laws and deep-rooted corruption, human trafficking is continuing, not only for sexual exploitation, bonded labor, begging and drug peddling and smuggling, not only women and children but also men and transgender are subject to human trafficking, it added. The plea also said that Section 31 of the Code of criminal procedure shall not apply to the penal provisions relating to human trafficking and smuggling and sentence for committing such crime shall be consecutive, not concurrent. The central government will provide more than 10 lakh vaccine doses to states and union territories in the next three days, informed the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on Saturday. Lacked 81,300 vaccine doses are in the pipeline and will be received by the states and union territories within the next three days, the ministry said. The Health Ministry said 25 crore 87 lakh 41,810 crore vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far through the Government of India free of cost channel and through direct state procurement category. Of this, the total consumption including vestiges is 24 crore 76 lakh 58,855 doses as per data available at 8 a.m. today, it said. Furthermore, 1 crore 12 lakh 41,187 COVID vaccine doses are still available with the states and union territories to be administered. The implementation of the liberalized and accelerated phase 3 strategy of COVID-19 vaccination has started from May 1, 2021. Under the strategy, in every month, 50% of the total central drug laboratory cleared vaccine doses of many manufacturers would be procured by Government of India, it added. It said the centre will continue to make these doses available to the state governments totally free of course as was being done earlier. The Union Health Ministry has informed that nearly 24 crore 96 lakh 304 vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. And now moving on to the next news. Due to a shortage of vaccines in indoor, district health authorities on Friday opened only nine vaccination centers out of 350 for administering the second dose of COVID vaccine to beneficiaries. Several vaccination centers were closed in indoor from Thursday due to the shortage of vaccines. However, the health department was able to get only 11,000 vaccines, after which only nine vaccine centers were opened instead of 350 centers, that too for the administration of the second doses only. Speaking to ANI, Dr. Tarun Gupta, immunization in charge health department said, according to the amount of stock the authorities had put it at nine centers today for the second dose. Yesterday, Dr. Gupta said they had run out of vaccines and today they got 11,000 vaccines so that tomorrow they will give a second dose to 30 centers. Vaccine stock is expected to be received by Monday, Gupta said. The Indian Medical Association, IMA, on Saturday said that 719 doctors have lost their lives due to coronavirus in the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, with Bihar recording the maximum fatalities. To IMA, Bihar recorded 111 deaths, Delhi 109, Uttar Pradesh 79, West Bengal 63, and Rajasthan 43. Among the southern states, Andhra Pradesh reported 35 deaths, while 36 doctors succumbed to the virus in Telangana. Tamil Nadu recorded 32 deaths, while Karnataka and Kerala reported 9 and 24 deaths, respectively. The Jammu and Kashmir administration has suspended as many as 12 block development officers, PDOs, of the Rural Development Department in Baramula and Anangta for unauthorized withdrawal of funds in excess from the EFMS account in 13 blocks of the two districts. 
suspended officers include eight junior KS officers and two assistant development officers of Paramula and Anagnak district. According to separate orders issued by Bitul Patak, Principal Secretary to Government, Department of Rural Development, an amount of rupees 9 lakh was withdrawn from common account in an unauthorized manner in pursuit of NREGA soft on May 24. This year and so far rupees 15 lakh has been withdrawn by district Anagnak. Similarly, District Paramula has withdrawn rupees 1.91 crore from common account of MGNREGA in pursuit of NREGA soft on April 8 this year, amounting to a total of rupees 2.04 crore of withdrawals so far. As per the other ACDs of Paramula and Agnak were asked to reply within two days. However, a response related to the matter has not been received till date. The Director of Rural Development Kashmir has been asked to make arrangements for suitable alternatives who will look after the charge of the various blocks of the two districts. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on Saturday rubbished the claims of so-called miscreants of hacking the COVID system and data leak. The ministry said the matters of the alleged hacking of the COVID system has now been investigated by the Computer Emergency Response Team of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Dr. R. S. Sharma, chairman of the Empowered Group of Vaccine Administration, has clarified that the claims of so-called hackers on the dark web relating to alleged hacking of the COVID system and data leak is baseless. Dr. R. S. Sharma further said that the authorities continue to take appropriate steps as are necessary for time to time to ensure that the data of the people are safe with COVID. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao on Friday informed that the state government had bought in New Panchayat Raj and Municipality X under which Rs. 339 crore will be given to the villagers and Rs. 148 crore will be given to the municipality's development every month. The CM said the state government had brought in new Panchayat Raj and Municipality Acts and extending support to the rural and urban areas in a big way which is not done anywhere in the country. The government, while extending the financial assistance to villages and municipalities, had also filled all vacancies, a statement issued by the Chief Minister's Office read. Every month, Rs. 339 crore is given to the villages and Rs. 148 crore to municipalities, development, news updates, etc. He said that Palais and Patana Prakati programs have yielded good results. He said it should be known why employees in Panchayat Raj and municipalities are failing in the discharge of their duties. He said if he finds during his visits that there is laxity on part of the employees, he would not spare them. Rao on Friday chaired a high-level review meeting on Pale and Patana Prakyati programs and declared that he would personally make surprise visit from June 19 to assess the progress of Pali and Patana Prakati programs and how Panchayat Raj and municipal officers are functioning all over the state. The CM also informed that a meeting will be held here at Prakati Bhavan on June 13 to review Pali and Patana Prakati programs being implemented at the ground level with additional collectors, district Panchayat Raj officers. And now moving on to the next news. Mega Raja Kopalan, an Indian origin journalist, along with two contributors, has won the Pulitzer Prize for innovative investigative reports that expose the vast infrastructure of prisons and mass internment camps secretly built by China for detaining hundreds of thousands of Muslims in its restive Xinjiang region. Raja Kopalan from BuzzFeed News is among two Indian origin journalists who won the U.S. Top Journalism Award on Friday. Raja Kopalan Jinjiang series won the Pulitzer Prize in the international reporting category. In 2017, not long after China began to detain thousands of Muslims in Jinjiang, Raja Kopalan was the first to visit an internment camp at a time when China denied that such places existed, BuzzFeed News said. In response, the government tried to silence her, revoking her visa and ejecting her from the country, BuzzFeed News wrote in its entry for the price. It would go on to cut off access to the entire region of the most Westerners and journalists, and the release of basic facts about detainees slowed to a trickle, it stated. Working for London and refusing to be silenced, Raja Kopalan partnered with two contributors, Alison Killing, a licensed architect who specialises in forensic analysis of architecture and satellite images of buildings, and Christo Bustic, a programmer who builds tools tailored for data journalists. The blazing Jin Jang stories shine desperately needed light on one of the worst human rights abusers of the time, said Mark Schoofs, 
editor-in-chief of BuzzFeed's news. Minutes after she won, Raja Kopalan told BuzzFeed News she wasn't even watching the ceremony live because she wasn't expecting to win. She only found out when Scoofs called to congratulate her on the victory. Criticizing Prime Minister K.P. Sharma, only led government, a provincial lawmaker from the opposition Nepali Congress Party, Narottam Badia has threatened to kill Prime Minister Oli. A provisional leader for Bagmati province in a meeting alleged the Prime Minister is compromising with every aspect of governance and therefore an assailant like Naturam God says necessary to save the nation. Prime Minister Oli is compromising with every issue and reaching deals to cling on to the power. Paitya said at the provisional assembly meeting while making a reference to Mahatma Gandhi's assassin Naturam Godse. If Oli is led free this way, the country will collapse and hence an assailant like Naturam Godse is necessary to save the nation, Padia said. Padia's statement has been criticized from all quarters including his own party, Nepali Congress. According to news house, WIO and a senior Nepali Congress leader said the party has instructed Padia to withdraw the statement and issue an apology to the Prime Minister. This is all for the I Today. Keep watching Home Bill TV.